everyone! So today I put on my Harry Styles inspired cardigan to answer some of your most frequently asked questions about it. So a few months ago I made an actual tutorial for it and then a lot of you had like some of the same questions so I decided to make a video about it. This is obviously not going to answer like everyone's questions but these are just like the most popular ones that I felt I kept getting asked so why not just make a video and go more into detail about all of it. So I'm going to answer five of the most frequently asked questions and these are like either people ask me either like in the comments of that video or on Instagram so yeah. Also I'll leave the link to my other video in the description and like you know here uh, if you want to check that out because that's the actual tutorial for the cardigan this is just like answering some questions one question that I'm not gonna exactly answer is the size uh, a lot of people ask me about the size like what's the size of this and the measurements and I really don't know um, and I don't even know how to start to like measuring it uh, but this is definitely like oversized um, and to make it smaller you can play around with the size of the square so each square is supposed to be 14 by 14 so maybe you can make them smaller and if you want it to be bigger you can make them bigger but maybe not too much maybe just like one or two centimeters or something like that but yeah I don't really know like the size of it I'm also gonna link again the um, the pattern released by JW Anderson just because that's something that helped me a lot it doesn't have like instructions precisely but it I, but yeah it does have some instructions so it's really helpful and yeah it might help you but yeah now now into like the actual questions that I'm gonna answer the first question is how long did it take me to finish this um, and I always say that it was around three to four weeks I'm not sure because I started it and then I was doing it all wrong so I had to start it again and it kind of all mixed up so I am not sure like exactly how long but it was around three to four weeks maybe more like four to five weeks uh, yeah so it took me some time but it was worth it so yeah the next question is what kind of darn did I use and I used the um, is it Karen Karen one pound these are the ones that I used um, and I just picked the right colors and this is like the brand that I use for like all of the colors but I'm gonna link it down anyways um, in case you want to buy this exact brand these are a like medium width I guess that's what it says um, if you wanted to look a little bit more closer to the one Harry's wearing I would go a little bit thicker it would make it look closer to that but this one works too so it's fine then I get asked about what kind of hook that I use the size of the hook that I used and so when I went to buy all the things that I needed I bought this package with like three little hooks um, and they're the it's the 5.0 the 5.25 and the 5.75 and my plan was only to use the 5.0 because that's the size of the yarn but um, I started playing around with like the different sizes with the different stitches and the 5.75 was great for like the orange stitch um, also for like all of the ribbing then the 5.25 was good for the green squares, the blue bands and the red and black squares then I used the 5.0 for the rest of the squares and the stitches so yeah just playing around um, you don't have to do it exactly like that but that's just what I found that worked for me but yeah it's a good idea to just play around with the different sizes and see like what's better for you with each stitch then I got asked how to make the two color squares so the red and black ones those were so hard and I had to try many things before I figure it out um, and it was really frustrating at the beginning it was just kind of hard <laughs> But um, once you figure it out and once you like kind of learn the pattern in your head, it becomes easier. But it's just it's just like a tedious process. Like even when I was making the second cardigan, I was just tired of those squares. But yeah, so I filmed a little bit of how to 
how I was making it, so yeah, let's move on to a voiceover. A lot of you asked for the pattern, and here it is. I got it from the JW Anderson official pattern, so I just screenshot it from there, but you can have it here. You can screenshot it from here if you want. As you can see, this pattern is for 18 stitches, but I did 22. I added two more because they get lost when you turn, and I added two more to make it reach the 14 centimeter mark. What I did is, as you can see at the top, there are numbered from 1 to 18. So every 1 or 18 stitch, I would add an extra one of the same color. So an extra red or black, depending on the color that it's on that stitch. I hope that makes sense. So basically, for example, you're going to start your first row with two red stitches and finish it with three red stitches. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way up. Here is my chain of 22 and for the second row I'm not going to add the black yet. I am going to make a row of slip stitches. Slip stitches are the one that you just pull the hook through the stitch, grab some yarn and just slip it through. Don't create an extra chain. And I'm doing this through the back of the chain instead of like the top or the bottom. It's just I turn the chain and start doing it through the back. The goal for me was to keep it as close together as possible and not create like a huge bump. And it was also easier for when I add the black. Once you reach the end of the row, you're gonna pull the black yarn through that little chain at the end. And then you're gonna chain one and turn the work. Now it's time to start working with those two colors. So first you're gonna make two red stitches and what I do is grab as much of those first two rows. I'm pulling the hook through it. I just wanna cover as much as I can and it gives it a more even look when it's finished. It's more like aesthetic, I guess. When you're finishing your second stitch, instead of grabbing red at the end, you're gonna close it with black that's to start the first black stitch and then you're gonna pull the hook through grab black yarn and close it with red and that's basically what you're gonna do every time you want to switch colors so this time I'm just gonna keep going with the red for six more stitches as it's shown in the pattern So you want to keep your stitches tight. So when I reach my second black stitch, what I want to do is pull that black yarn so to make sure that it went all through and it gives it a cleaner look and you can see less of the black through the red. And then I just did my stitch as I did the other one. So pull the black through the red and then create a black stitch and close it with red to finish with three black stitches. Sorry, so this is not my second black stitch, this is my third black stitch. You wanna finish the row as normal with your three last red stitches and then you're gonna chain one and turn. Now this is where the fun part starts. This is where I made some changes and I might've made it harder for myself, but I also like it better, like how it looks. It just gives it a cleaner look. I like to do when I'm working on the back side of the square is instead of inserting the hook through the front I insert it through the back and then grab some yarn pull it through and make my stitch so I'm working you could say like backwards but it's to keep that clean look at the front and not mess up with the look in the back I am still doing the same thing when I'm switching colors and I'm still following the pattern as it is with the rows with the same numbers as it stated in that pattern. I'm just inserting my hook through the back. I hope that makes sense. I'm kind of really bad at explaining this stuff, but I hope that you can kind of see it and understand what I'm saying. So I'm just doing the same. It's just through the back and then 
pulling some yarn and making the stitch and this is all single crochet style I am also gonna leave a link down below with a tutorial that explains how to do this style of crocheting I'm not an expert at crocheting and I'm not an expert at like teaching it so I'll leave a, that tutorial that could help you better I'm just showing you the pattern that I use and how I alter it a little bit to make it work for me one thing that you're going to find out is that the two yarns get tangled a lot and there's people that have techniques to avoid it I did not find anything that would help me so what I did is I when it was really hard to keep working I would just stop and untangle them and then I would continue working uh, but you would find ways to manage it I promise and then I just kept going this way until I was done with my first set of seven rows I just follow the pattern and when I was working on the front I stitch as normal and when I was working from the back I would reverse it and just insert my hook from the back and grab yarn from the front so here is the first set of seven rows finished this is how it looks you could think that this is halfway through but it's not you're gonna need more stitches than it's shown to reach the 14 centimeters at least in my case um and then th with the yarn that i'm using if you're using a thicker yarn then you're gonna reach the 14 centimeters mark faster but since i am gonna be missing some stitches what i like to do is to do an extra first row when i start my next set of seven stitches so if you're following what i'm saying you should finish your first set of seven stitches on the front side so what i like to do is chain one and then start with the first row according to the pattern so i'll stitch two red ones and then one black six red ones one black six red ones one black three red ones once i'm done with that row i like to chain one and turn it and then as you can see i have that extra row in there i like how it looks as well because it gives you that more like extra space for the pattern to look better and cleaner and then what I do is I start the first row again, but this time it is going to be the proper beginning for the next set of seven rows. Once you're done with that second set of seven rows, you're almost done. You can leave it like that, but I still like to add two more rows to make it reach that 14 centimeters. I feel like those two extra rows are what it needs to reach the 14 centimeters and also it gives it more space to attach it to the other squares in the cardigan. So what I like to do is do the first row that it's in the pattern. So I'll do a normal first row right here. I already did that. I already did that extra first row. Now what I'm going to do, instead of repeating that first row, I am going to go onto the second row according to the pattern. And so instead of doing two first rows, I'm just going to like continue the pattern as if I was going to start another set of seven rows, but it's just going to be the first two stitches. So once we're done with that final stitch, I like to chain one. But instead of just doing one color, I like to grab both colors, pull them through, and then just cut it. And I like to leave it around 8 centimeters long or something just to give me some room for when I'm going to attach it to the other squares. Or to make the tassels if you're going for that look. And that is it. That's your pattern square uh, i don't know if this was really helpful or not but i did my best 
So yeah, that's how you make the red and black squares. It's a lot of trial and error, like you have to figure out what works for you. Like maybe there is a different technique that you think it's easier and it's it might like be prettier. Like, yeah, I don't know, like it's just like whatever works better for you. Then the last question is, where do the small squares go? According to the pattern, like the official JW Anderson pattern, you have to make some like smaller squares or like, I guess, rectangles because they're not squares. Um, so they're like 14 by 12 centimeters. Um, and I think, apparently I forgot how to, <laughs> to explain that in like my other tutorial. So those are the top part of the cardigan. I don't know if you can see, but um, yeah, like this look like rectangles. And that was something that I also noticed in like Harry's cardigan, that like some of them look like rectangles. And I thought it was like part of like the shape that they gave to the sleeve. But turns out that they're just like smaller squares that go on the top. So it's just like the top row that it's like smaller. Um, and it helps also for like the neck pieces here. And it's also really helpful once you have all of the squares to like lay them all down and have like a vision of like where everything goes before you start like putting them in together. Because even when I do that, I still make mistakes. So yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good idea to lay, lay them down. So here I'm about to lay out the back side of the cardigan and I am going to start with the small squares since they are the first row. As you can see, these are smaller than the regular squares and I like to make these piles just to make it easier for me to start laying it down. This is the back layout and what I will be following. I talk more about these and the other layouts on my actual tutorial video. You can take a look at that if you want to learn more about these. Or you can go to the actual JW Anderson pattern and you can find it there. That's where I got it from. And the laying out, it's pretty self-explanatory. I just lay out as it looks in the pattern and I start with the first row that it's the small square. So all of that first row, it's the 12 by 14 squares or rectangles. <laughs> and then I just add the rest to them. And the piles help a lot to make it easier and just to guide me. I finish laying it all out and that's how I look. All of that first row, it's small square, so 12 by 14. And you're gonna do that with the two front panels as well. And the sleeves don't have any small squares. And then I make these little piles to make it easier to attach it later. And yeah, so those are like the five most asked questions that I get about this cardigan I know there's like other questions so like if you have any other questions let me know and I'll do my best to answer them I'm not an expert I'm making cardigans and it's actually kind of nice to be wearing my cardigan I haven't worn it because it it hasn't been cold enough and now it's kind of cold so it's just kind of nice to wear it it's like wearing a blanket it's really warm I love it so that is it give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or not I don't know uh, and thank you so much for watching my tutorial like I think it's crazy it's in like 65,000 views and to me that's insane I never expected that many people to watch my tutorial and that many people to find it helpful so like thank you I just, it's crazy I love it. Subscribe to my channel if you want and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye!